A question was asked to women over 75 years of age, and a sobering answer was given in return. Here's the question. Would you rather die or break a hip and be admitted to a nursing home? The sobering answer, over 80% of the women said they would rather die. Today's program is entitled Building Better Bones, Part 1, so stay by. Hi, welcome to Abundant Living. Glad you allowed us to come into your living room again once more. And my name is Curtis Akins. I'd like to introduce my wife, my beautiful bride of 12 glorious years, Paula Akins. How are you doing today, honey? I'm doing wonderful. Okay, you're looking mighty good too. Thank you. I, I like your hairstyle, Thank by you. the way. Yes, you're welcome. Praise the Lord. Uh, you made some statements at that opening. Yeah, that opening statement. That women would rather die than have hip fractures. That's right. That's heavy. Yeah, that, that's heavy. Again, let me reemphasize that. Uh, they asked several hundred women mm -hmm. over the age of 75 that question. Mm -hmm. Would you rather die or break a hip and be admitted to a nursing home? Mm -hmm. And over 70, over 80% of people who were asked that question mm -hmm. said they would rather die. Mm -hmm. And again, this is a debilitating disease. Right. And over 66% of the people who break a hip lose their independence. Yeah, so because right. of that, most women in that group said, we'd rather die. Mm, it's a mm. sad thing, but uh, we're going to explore this uh, topic of osteoporosis, building better bones. So for the next two weeks, we're going to also explore how to increase the bone density, bone mass, so that we don't have to break our hip, spine, or wrist, or forearm, et cetera. So it's an epidemic. Why don't you then define for us the definition of osteoporosis and then how are they tested, how are we tested to find out whether we have it or not? Okay, let's talk about the bone itself. Now, a lot of people may think that the bone is a dead tissue, hmm. okay? Bones are alive and they demand a lot of things to make them more dense. Uh, bones contain about 30% of water is bone, a bone matrix. Now, there's two terms I want to explain before we go into the bone, the definition, and also the testing as well. First of all, we have, we call bone cells called osteocytes, okay? Now, there's two types. We have osteoblast mm. and we have osteoclast. Now, osteoblasts are cells that build up the bone. Mm -hmm. B for bone, building up. Osteoblasts, they build up bone. Okay. Cells called osteoclasts, C for chewing up, they chew up bone. So you have osteoblasts, they build up the bone. Mm -hmm. Osteoclasts, they build down the bone. So this is called bone remodeling. And this happens throughout our course of our living. So thereby the bone builds up and then they tear down. Build up and tear down. This is bone remodeling. Okay. Now, our peak bone mass reaches about the age of 30. Therefore, having said that, let's go to our graph and let's explain this more in detail by this graphic. Now, you see here that, again, at the age of about 30, we have peak bone mass. Thereby, you want to make sure that it's more or less an IRA account. The more you have in your IRA account, then the more you have to live in your bone mass until the end of your life. So if you have a lot of bone mass built up at the age of 30, mm -hmm. then you can coast longer as you grow, grow, uh, grow close to the closing uh, years of one's life. Mm -hmm. Now, after the age of 30, we begin to lose, as you see this graphic here, lose more bone than we build up. So now the line is going down after the age of 30. And therefore, that's why we have uh, people who have osteoporosis or even low bone mass. Now, you look at this chart here. This is a test. This is called the DEXA scan. D-E-X-A, DEXA scan. Mm -hmm. It stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorption Metry. And this is the main gold standard to test bone matrix, bone mass. Thereby, they will give you a number. And this is a T number. Now, if you look closely at this graphic here, 
uh, a minus one down to a minus 2.5 in that area there, we call that low bone mass. You don't have osteoporosis, just low bone mass. Now, below the red line, this is below 2.5, minus 2.5, and below, mm -hmm. we call that a person having osteoporosis. Okay. In that low bone mass and osteoporosis, we have 44 million people who fall in that category. So again, uh, this is the T-score, and this can be done at any uh, doctor's office. And again, thank you, Amanda, for that graphic. They would uh, measure the bone mass in the hip, mm -hmm. the spine, mm -hmm. and the wrist, those three areas. So again, we need to have that uh, uh, T-scale uh, measure so we know where we stand. Because remember now, you know, hypertension is called the silent killer. Right. Osteoporosis is called the silent disease mm -hmm. because bone is being snatched or the bone matrix, the calcium is being snatched from our bones and we don't even know it. It's a silent disease. So we meet, uh, need to do that. Now you had your bone mass checked some time ago, didn't you, honey? Well, I was very surprised as a matter of fact. Um, they were doing some testing and I had an opportunity to go and have uh, the test done. They did my foot. They actually had people oh, did my your foot, foot. Okay. into uh, a machine and tested out. And I was like one of those, praise the Lord, because when they finished with the bone mass, they said that my bone density was that of a 22-year-old. 22-year-old? I'm like, Go, Jesus, go, Jesus, go. Now, okay, okay. Let, let, let's, let's, <laughs> let's expound on that. Now, you have a yeah. bone mass of a 22-year-old. Yes. So now, pr probably people need to know your age so they can see how that is impact on your bone mass because let's say if you're 23, then that's not much of a significant change there. But maybe we want to explore that or share with the people your age and then they can get an idea of your bone mass and how important so, that is. So he's trying to get me to tell my age. No, let I'm just saying just, for emphasis let me just, for let me the just say this. TV audience. Because of the fact that I'm involved in a lot of strength bearing exercises and walking, then of course the more walking and exercise you're involved in, then you actually, your chronological age and your physical age are different. So for all the women out there, you know I'm not going to go there with the age thing and you understand very well, Mary, what I'm saying. So we'll move on to the next subject as to why is it that there are women who actually get osteoporosis Osteoporosis. Okay. And the uh, reason for that is that, um, and wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 yes, okay. Okay, we're okay, going to the next one. Swiftly. Okay, now, osteoporosis. One of the things that happens is that we have talked before on our program about menopause, women going through menopause. We talked about premenopause, we talked about postmenopause, and the women who are sitting right smack dab in the middle. And if you recall those programs, of course, if you don't have them, you can always check with 3ABN. We did a whole series on all these programs talking about menopause and osteo, menopause and heart disease, menopause and cancer, menopause and diabetes, menopause and weight management, always relating to women and their health. But about 40% Curtis of the women who are in menopause mm -hmm. okay actually have a problem because whether it's surgical or natural menopause they're mm -hmm. going through okay they can actually lose that bone density mainly because of the ovarian function and also poor diet ovarian function basically talking about now because of the hormonal levels uh, the estrogen pedestrian progesterone and testosterone levels change up as a woman begins to move into the menopausal age and also after post menopausal then she's really having an issue or problem her body mm -hmm. with a bone matrix all right okay. uh, as a matter of fact it's been said that uh, quite a, a bit within that first five years after uh, menopause post menopausal mm -hmm. is when she would lose most of her bone matrix and that's because of the hormonal hormonal imbalance, specifically estrogen, all right? Okay. So when you think of it that way, uh, that bone loss is going to be, of course, as you mentioned earlier, the hip, mm -hmm. the vertebrae, and also the wrists. Okay. Now, again, let's ex expound on that because, again, postmenopause, so now the average age for a woman going into menopause, I believe, is what, 51 years? About 51. That's the, the average, average age, right. but it can be prior to that or even after that, all right? Yeah, we had talked before on the program about the fact that really and truly even in a woman, her latter part of her 30s is the first time we want her to take her first estrogen test. And even a bone density, she can, but usually we use the bone density later in her life, like when she's in her 50s, all right? Okay. But that first part around the 30s, the reason for that is that in your 30s, even though uh, you're not menopausal, we want to get that estrogen, progesterone, testosterone level mm -hmm. so that when you begin to move to 
into the area of your 40s, then we have a thing called pre premenopausal. Mm -hmm. Premenopausal also means in those 40s now, 45 up, mm -hmm. a woman can begin to experience problems with her bones and also with that estrogen level in her 40s, late 40s. Mm, okay. So rather than waiting and thinking you got to be 51, that's okay. when I'm going to get it, All you right. want to get the score. So you got it in your 30s, you do mm -hmm. it in your 40s, your latter 40s, and then you know where you stand automatically and know what the protocol is going to be. I remember also that we talked about the fact that a woman can also go through surgical menopause. Okay. And surgical menopause means she's removal of the ovaries, removal of the uh, uterus, um, also uh, she might have breast cancer. All these things cause a problem, whether it's uh, through chemotherapy or taking some type of medication because of the deficiency or the problem going on, that would set her automatically into menopause. So sometimes women think that I've got to be older, but I was surprised when I did my program how many women in their 30s, their early 30s, and even I even met women in their 20s who had already had hysterectomies done mm, for one 20s. reason or not, so therefore they were already menopausal. Okay, so again, to sum up, Estrogen seems to be a protector. Absolutely. And then Absolutely. once a woman goes through menopause, of course, the ovaries no longer produce an estrogen. Right. Other sites too. Right. And therefore, right. the bone matrix began to decrease yes. gradually. Let's go back to that the first graphic, of man. Now let's also expound on that because if you look at that graphic, there, look at the 50-year mark there. Mm -hmm. That's where that line begins to drop yes. drastically. Yes at the age of 50 and keeps on going to the age of 70. So in that mark there, that little span there at the age of 50 is where that line be goes, goes below the yellow line mm -hmm. at the age of 50. And that's where most people or most women go into menopause. So they right, lose up right. to what, 50% I heard, 30, 50% mm -hmm, of their mm -hmm, bone mass mm -hmm. in the first five years first five after years. menopause. Right, Thank right. you, Amanda, for that graphic. I, I also want to clarify too that the, you talked about that 30 years of age where the bones are building up and building that reservoir for later. Okay. And that the blessing is that we're gonna talk about that in the other part of our program when we get to uh, the third portion of this program. Okay. And that is that the matrix um, was not so much of me building up to the age of 30 because I didn't have all this information about health right. and lifestyle in my 20s or in my 30s. Oh, so as a result of that, I learned that eating right, which mm -hmm. is the other component, eating properly and also exercise, actually keeps the bone matrix mm -hmm. steady and can rebuild mm -hmm. because of that. Praise okay. the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay, well, good, good thing. We're going to come back to that because how we can also uh, supply estrogen to the body system from a plant-based source, therefore protect our bone matrix. Now I got a question for you. Okay. We see all the time on TV these mustaches. Mustache. Everybody's wearing a mustache. I got one now. Which, what, no, what I'm talking about a white about? mustache oh, because of the milk Because issue. of gray hair? Oh, and because also, of milk. And also, the newest thing that's going on right now is that you've got milk trying to come back into play. Because, you know, for a while there, mm -hmm. they were trying to say, uh, let's calm down on the whole milk, the skin milk, the 2% milk. And now, all of a sudden, their milk's not doing too well. Mm -hmm. So now they've got all kind of actors and mm -hmm. singers coming on TV with this white mustache okay. on, okay? Women and men. Now, you know women don't have them. But it's just a milk. <laughs> we call a milk okay. a milk ring on their, on their lip, the mm -hmm. upper lip. And so the reason that, that um, they're trying to push that milk, but we know, wait a minute. If you said osteoporosis, and we're talking about basically American women, mm -hmm and building better bones. Building better bones, and we're supposed to be drinking at least three glasses of milk a day. And we probably drink more milk than most countries in the world. Then my question is, the question why is, then is osteoporosis so high in the American population? Now that's a good question. Maybe Amanda, our camera crew, can uh, answer that question. Why don't you answer that or question? Or maybe I can I did answer. ask you. Okay, yeah, well you did ask me, yeah, okay. <laughs> cow's folks, milk. Cow's milk. Now folks, women, if you want to have brittle bones, if you want to have brittle bones, one of the best things you can do is to drink as much cow's mm. milk as you possibly can. Now, I'm gonna let you stew in that for a little while. Let me explain that statement. Now, first of all, we are not designed to drink cow's milk mm -hmm. by nature. Now, we did a program some years ago entitled Not Milk. We're gonna cover some of that in this program, but not everything. But anyway, first of all, we are the only species on earth that drinks another species milk. Animals don't even do that. Mm. As a matter of fact, a baby calf will stop drinking a cow's milk at the age of six months, mm. all right? But we keep drinking cow's milk until the day we die. Number two, 
cow's milk, even though cow's milk has calcium, it also has something else that will cancel out the calcium, and that is animal protein. Hmm. For every gram of animal protein we take into our system, we excrete out into our urine one milligram of calcium. Therefore, any animal protein, be it milk, eggs, cheese, butter, yogurt, mm -hmm. beef, chicken, pork, lamb, mm -hmm. any animal protein, we lose one milligram of calcium in our urine. So the more animal protein we take in, we actually, as one person says, we simply pee out our bones. Mercy. All right? Therefore, mm -hmm. because milk, although it has calcium, mm -hmm. it has animal protein. Now, there's been, I want to use a statement that my mother used to say years ago. There are oodles and oodles of clinical studies <laughs> on this as well. American Journal of Clinical Nutrition did a study of 44,000 women from Iowa, and they chart them over a 12-year span. Okay. And they uh, had 44 cases of those in that group who had broke a hip. <laughs> they discovered that those who broke a hip had a higher ratio of um, lower ratio of calcium to animal protein. Okay. In other words, it's not just a calcium issue, it's also an animal protein issue. The more animal protein they had in their urine and in their blood, they were more likely to have a broken hip. Hmm. Those who did not experience any hip fractures had a lower protein ratio and a lower and a higher calcium ratio. Okay. So again, it's more or less a, the higher the calcium, mm -hmm. The lower the protein ratio, the better off you be. All okay, right. Okay. So there's also another clinical study of people um, who drink one or less glass of milk per week mm -hmm. had a lower rate of hip fractures, fractures of the spine and the wrist. Those who drank two or more glasses of milk per day mm -hmm. had more fractures of the hip, spine, and wrist. And that was from the American Journal of Public Health. So there's a lot of studies uh, exemplifying that. So again, uh, milk is not the thing we want to do as far as building bone matrix. We're going to talk more about that when we go into our next program next week and the week after that as well. So again, we need to shift from animal protein okay. to plant protein. Because guess what, folks? When we take in plant protein, guess what? We keep the calcium that we eat in our foods. All right. So again, as the statement goes, we're not so much, we're not what we eat, mm -hmm. we're what we absorb. Mercy. Because Mercy. we only absorb about 30% of the calcium in the cow's milk. But there's other foods we'll talk about next week where it's rich in calcium. And when we get that calcium into our bodies, we keep it. And that's the key. Well, now, what about caffeine? Because okay. we hear a lot about that as well. Yeah, caffeine, caffeine and sodium as well. Mm -hmm. The more sodium we take in, okay. the more calcium we take in, the more calcium, um, excuse me, let's say it over again. The more sodium we take into okay. our system, okay. the more caffeine we take into our system, the more calcium we lose from our bones mm. and it's excreted mm. out into the urine. So again, calcium is excreted out when we take in caffeinated drinks, mm. soft drinks, and also a high sodium diet, all right? Uh, every 2,300 milligrams of sodium, we lose 60 milligrams of calcium. Mercy. See, mm -hmm. so again, we need to be careful of, um, these are, I call these the bone bandits. Mm -hmm. Animal protein mm -hmm. in any form, milk, chicken, fish, pork, lamb, beef, etc. All right. Caffeine, sodas, coffee, sodium also, these are bone bandits. We can talk about cigarette smoke and alcohol too. So all these are bone bandits. They're snatching out the calcium from our bones and become weakened and we have osteoporosis. Well, I guess we've got quite a bit we're gonna be covering on these programs now, these next two times we come together. And we also um, have, I think, just one more graphic that we need to show before we start talking about going into the kitchen, right? Yeah, let, let's look at this last graphic all here, right. Amanda. And this is what happens, folks. We can actually build bone matrix. Now, I don't have to tell you which bone we would prefer to have, the one on the right or the one on the left. Now, of course, the one on the right is a person probably is doing a lot of things that we're gonna talk about for the next two weeks. 
uh, not drinking the animal protein or taking in animal protein, mm -hmm. taking in the plant protein so the calcium is kept in their bones. But a person on the right there, uh, again, that's the osteoporotic product bone there. It's very, uh, it's less dense, so of course it's going to have more fractures at the hip, spine, and the wrist. So again, but that bone on the right, it can be built up again. It doesn't have to be that way. And we'll talk about that for the next two programs. Okay, well, I time guess... Time to go into the kitchen, I believe. Time to go in the kitchen, and I'll, I'm going to be fixing a, 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 a dish that does not use milk. Hello, Ooh, how about amen. that? Amen, okay. hallelujah. Okay. But I am making, uh, we are going to make a creamy strawberry dessert. Get your paper and your pencil and meet us in the kitchen. Would you like to learn more about preparing healthful vegetarian dishes? If so, then you want to be sure to order our free Abundant Living resource sheet. It contains useful information about product and cookbooks. It will help you to learn more about this natural way of cooking. Along with your order, we would also like to include a free copy of the booklet, The Natural Way to Keep in Shape. This 20-page booklet is filled with tips that will help you to develop a total lifestyle approach to health. To receive both the Abundant Living resource sheet and The Natural Way to Keep in Shape, Call us at 800-752-3226 during regular business hours. Call and ask for this special offer today. Well, we want to welcome you back. Right. And we are going to do a recipe that is devoid of animal protein whatsoever. Okay. You're going to really enjoy this recipe, Curtis. Oh, so okay. no milk, no cow's milk. No. No animal protein. No. Keep our calcium. That's right. Strong bones. That's right. Let's do it. All right, let's look at the actual recipe itself. It's called a creamy strawberry dessert. It calls for two packages of Morinu tofu, extra firm, two tablespoons of honey, two packages of Morinu pudding mix, vanilla, one cup of fresh strawberries, and one graham cracker crust already prepared. Oh, that's it? <laughs> that's, oh, that's it. That's it's fast. a very easy, okay, very, I very I simple. I can do that by myself. <laughs> but because of the fact that okay. uh, the time factor, we've already got our tofu in, mm -hmm. in our food processor, already ready to blend. I'm going to start it up, and as we start it up, we'll be adding mm. in the honey and also a little bit of the strawberries, okay? Okay. All righty. You can already see it starting to get a nice smooth texture. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put the strawberries in. And those are fresh, They can be fresh or frozen, but they are unsweetened. That's why I put a little bit of honey in. Okay. Of course, you don't have to put the honey in if you're going to be using okay. sweetened strawberries. I'm going to turn it back on again, and now we're going to add in our vanilla mate mix as well. But why don't you show them that vanilla mate mix before okay. I even add that, okay? i get a close-up of this. Now, again, we're using the more new tofu. And the Morinu tofu also makes the pudding mix as well. And so they have vanilla. They also have lemon. They have another flavor too that we're not going to discuss on this program today. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can get this at a lot of your major grocery stores across this nation. That's right. That's and right. And also health food stores as well. Okay. And no refined sugar. That's right. It's non-dairy. Non-dairy. All natural. And no animal vegan protein. And no animal protein. Therefore, this calcium in this dish we keep it in our bones. All right, I'm going to spin this around and we're going to go ahead and add in the okay. mixes. Now, I stopped that there more. because I see that uh, you um, are trying to... Um, <clears throat> see, now you're supposed to do that, see? Mm -hmm. Now people are looking at that. No, see? they saw that. Oh, they, well, how did you know somebody's going to call and I know they're, they're going to say They're going to email? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's on me then. Let's that's turn on one on more me. time and let's put this last package in. Okay.
I was waiting I like for you to kind of scrape but you, you around the edges on there. One, yeah. Scrape around the edges. So we want to make sure we get everything nice and in. Now. Everything in is nice and smooth. Okay. Nice well, honey, creamy before texture. you do that one more time, you talked about, of course, over there in the talking uh, mm -hmm. section there, you talked about the estrogen when a woman loses her estrogen. Uh, during the menopausal uh, time frame, and we're emphasizing a plant-based estrogen. Right, we'll talk right. more about that next program as well. But again, uh, soy has a plant-like estrogen, thereby we want to emphasize uh, soy products, soy milks, tofu, etc. So mm -hmm. we're using soy in this recipe, so this will help to keep the bone matrix, all right? All righty, okay. all righty. All right, let's spin one more time. Whoops. Okay. Now, I know you're saying, I wonder what's going to happen next. Well, okay. what we're going to do, all we're going to do is just take our mixture, pour it into our uh, graham cracker crust mm. already prepared uh, dish. Okay. And when we come back, you will see the finished product. So stay by. Would you like to learn more about preparing healthful vegetarian dishes? If so, then you want to be sure to order our free Abundant Living resource sheet. It contains useful information about products and cookbooks. It will help you to learn more about this natural way of cooking. Along with your order, we would also like to include a free copy of the booklet, The Natural Way to Keep in Shape. This 20-page booklet is filled with tips that will help you to develop a total lifestyle approach to health. To receive both the Abundant Living Resource Sheet and The Natural Way to Keep in Shape, call us at 800-752-3226 during regular business hours. Call and ask for this special offer today. Well, look at that. Okay, now this looks good, honey. A All nice, right. creamy, strawberry, strawberry dessert. dessert. All right. Okay. Now, no cow's milk. Nope. No animal protein. Nope. So now all the calcium in this dish we keep. Is That's that right. correct? That's right. All right. That's what I'm talking about now. Building better bones. Now, of course, we will be coming back for the next two weeks on the same topic. And we talk about, uh, of course, estrogen, losing the estrogen as well. We'll talk more about that as well. Now, I guess maybe we, I know what a strawberry tastes like, but maybe the dessert itself. What do you, what do you think? Can you? I knew. Can you, can I knew you, you were going to go there. I knew you were going to go there. Out. Oh, okay. you got the strawberries in there too. I now, that, that's a small here. dish. See, I knew you were going to start. Is that for a baby or that, that's for me? Uh, mm. Oh, you, oh, you hush me up. <laughs> oh, that's a good. Oh, my goodness. Now, I like to actually freeze it sometime too and make it into a frozen dessert. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it sits for about a couple hours until it actually will firm up, all right? So a nice chill, huh? Mm -hmm. Why don't you take a bite of that too, honey? I will. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice creamy mm -hmm. texture mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to close out, honey. You have to close out, okay. Mm -hmm. Now you have to help me close out again, all right? We'll start all out. Right. Okay, well, as always, we close the words of Jesus Christ, who Jesus said in John 10, 10, I come, that they might have life and have it more abundantly.